No, skepticism is awesome. It's, there you like go. A, <laughs> it's a superpower. It's like you can see the matrix code. So originally this panel was supposed to be Matthew Chapman, kind of based around his new movie that came out. And then he got one of his movie projects greenlit and they couldn't change the casting call day, even though he tried. So uh, we allowed him to like make a couple million dollars rather than be here. All but right. he sends his regards. Yeah, he does. And actually he told me that that some of the stuff in his new project would be related and he's going to try to get the movie company to allow him to show some stuff here next year before it comes out. Has anyone so. out there seen The Ledge yet? Have yeah. you seen it? Yeah. Very good. I highly recommend it. Um, it's a very, very atheistic themed movie. And um, I won't tell you the ending, but um, it's worth uh, watching this movie because it, it b balances ethics and humanism and skepticism and all kinds of wonderful things that I think you'll appreciate as a skeptic audience seeing. They had some really very realistic kind of arguments between there's a true believer in the movie and um, the atheist and the atheist fell, falls in love with the true believer's wife and then there's lots of arguments about yeah, it kind of is actually. Yeah, and then things happen. Otherwise, I, if I if I do anything more, you, it, kinda, it, it spoils it. Yeah, oh, there's spoilers. a ledge involved. Yeah. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> but Matthew Chapman would also be very happy if one of us would talk about his efforts to get the science debate going for yeah. our presidential yeah. candidates. So I'd like to really emphasize that you go on the um, blog and on the website and sign up as someone who's requesting a science debate for the presidential candidates. This started the last election. Uh, it was then it was called it was www.sciencedebate2008. And now it's just science debate. And um, and now more than just the United States, there's other countries now doing it, and they came to him and it's trying to get candidates for the highest office to have at least one debate about scientific issues because almost every single time there's at least a couple hours on TV dedicated to like, you know, let's go to this pastor's farm and talk about religion. But what does that have to do with policy at all? So the point is science is more important than almost anything else because that's like the big engine and they don't like to talk about it. And I think everybody that comes here would probably like to hear the candidates talk about what they think about science, or at least. Or if they think at all. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe show what they know. Yeah, I know. As, at least have an interest. As I understand it, the. So yeah. Is there anything about which they're less informed than science? Well, yeah, that's another thing. Ethics. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is everybody on the mic? Yeah. Okay. Please, oh, please. As, as please I understand it, the parallel is that the presidential debates often will be about foreign policy, or there'll be one about economics. And the idea of science debate 2010, as opposed to <clears throat> science debate 08, is to have a debate about science policy. What should be the United States policy toward funding science, toward encouraging science education, et cetera, that sort of thing. So yeah. It'd be very worthwhile. And in the past it's worth few years, few election cycles, there's been one about, one about foreign policy, one about economics, and there's always been one about faith and values. Well, not a debate, but there's definitely well, a discussion about it, which but, would, yeah, ends up being the same thing. So, yeah, so they're trying to, like, well, let's talk about, like, things that will matter in the long run. Because, I, mean, I mean, that other part is personal, really, in mm -hmm. the end. Oh. There's a regular argument you made there, too. Um, so this is going to be kind of like using his platform as the movie, and he would moderate this, and he'd talk about that and how people feel about it. Um, so I just took the idea, because I don't want to talk about the movie, because that's his movie, and that's not my thing. I mean, I like the movie, but I, I'm not him. I can't say this is what he meant. 
Um, but I just spun it as, have, uh, this is a very stupid question, but you know, the only and negative feedback I've had all day was from the, well, through all con, was yesterday's opening panel, the kickoff, because when I asked this question, is everybody here a skeptic? Almost already raised their hand. I says, is anybody here, you know, new or not a skeptic and just wants to learn more about it? Not a single person raised their hand. And I, we ask that question every, every year to see if we should talk about some of the basics. And when nobody had raised their hand, we gave them a couple shots to do it and they didn't do anything. So we just went along with like the stuff that skeptics like. And then two hours later, this lady comes back and she said, does, do, do you guys read the feedback? I said, yeah, we always do, actually. She said, well, I wanted you to know that you'll get a negative feedback. It was me. I said, oh. And I was like, well, now it's been like three hours. I didn't know which panel. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, I was at the kickoff. I said, oh, OK. She said, well, you guys didn't really get into what a, what a skeptic is. I said, well, that's why. We, I mean, we asked twice, and actually one of the panelists asked, is, I think you did. Yes. And nobody raised a hand. And that's the reason, we're not gonna waste like 25 minutes when everybody says, all right, well, I'm on board, let's go, because it's a waste of time. Raise your hand if you're a Beeble farm. Because nobody raised their hand. No, so we can't. I said, raise your hand if you're a beeple fart, but nobody raised their hand. I'm so not. how can you have a discussion about what's the definition of a skeptic if people might not know what a skeptic is? Yeah, you have that's to define your terms. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So good point. well, that's the thing, though. I mean, they should have. No. Somebody, somebody wandering yeah. in yeah. out the hallway that was my might criticism. not know what a. My niece walked out of here. Not my niece walked. It was out of here. you. It was my. Criticism. It was you. Yeah. Yes. And and, and you. this is a self-identified skeptic. So. My niece walked out of here going, "Is this a secret cult?" <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, live and learn. She was not going to raise it. The conversation had already been going for like 10, 15 yeah. minutes, and so when she. She was not going to raise her hand in a room full of people that had already, you know, identified. Get on the mic. Get on the microphone. So. Get on. No, get I'm up. done. No, I'm done. <laughs> You're done. You're done? No, I mean, I, I, this is not to say anything bad. Actually, I, I, I was using this like the first kind of question, because you said what you just said. You know, are we a secret cult or something? I mean, I, I heard this like, wow, that's terrible. And I didn't think that at all during that panel. In fact, I got a ton of great feedback. And then I got this one. I was like, so it kind of like plagued me all night. D Derek, the implication of some of the things you're saying is that there's an assumption skeptics as a group have that everyone knows what a skeptic is and that we all are that. Yeah. And uh, apropos to this panel discussion specifically, part of that assumption is that every one assumes that a skeptic is also an atheist, and I think that's yeah. a false assumption. It is. And I would love to tease that out. That sounds like an interesting thing to get and into. And that is kind of the point of this, because Matthew Chapman's movie is very atheist, mm -hmm. but he does hardcore. It's also very skeptic. Hmm? It, what yes. I like about the movie is, is we're not just talking about, and I didn't feel that there was a lot of discussion about religion or, or atheism. I felt that there was a strong skeptical presence. Yes. He was skeptical, and, and that was throughout his entire, through all the domains of his life, and not just in, not just with the, the he, with his roommate, yeah. with the, yes, uh, the main character. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't just about religion. Yeah, and that's kind of where I was going with that. And it was, I'm so glad you were here. <laughs> but um, in that opening panel, uh, yeah. I made a statement about us being prepared with an elevator speech about skepticism uh, if we are to promote what we're all about and, and be inviting to people who might be interested in coming to see some of our um, speakers in our panels uh, we have to be prepared in between yesterday and today i've given my elevator speech about four times yeah. and i gotta tell you it's been fun and it's been exciting for me to actually see some of the people that I talked to earlier today here and I don't you know it was Bobby and Rhonda are you still back there I can't see that far back yeah, anyway they um, they loved the pitch and they might come back tomorrow I don't know 
but I want to emphasize so much that you're all practicing for that <coughs> crucial minute that you might have with someone to explain skepticism and be inviting and welcoming to someone who might not be one of us right now, but will be. One of us. Oh, one of us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds cult-like, yes. <laughs> Like-minded. Oh, that's still cult-like. Oh, <laughs> where's the thesaurus when I need it? <laughs> so, yeah, and that's kind of been, a, it's, here's a question. Is everybody here, does anybody here not identify as code skeptic, or you're just trying to find out more? Hey, one back there. Two. Do I see three? Three. <laughs> I see four. 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 No, three. Oh, that's, no, I was just trying to joke. Um, well, here's the thing. If okay, of the people who didn't raise their hands, does that mean you identify? How many of you actually kind of like troll the message boards and get all that stuff in the internet, and you you're involved in a way? Anybody? One, two, um, a few people. What about a third, maybe? Um, so there's been a lot of overtones, what, probably in the past year, maybe, about that this line that you just talked about, this weird dividing line of skeptic versus atheist. Are they the same? Is it, and what, okay, obviously, I think we'd all agree that it's skeptics. No, it's not the same thing. But then again, where does the, line blur, because obviously there is a line that blurs. So ask some of the panels their, their opinion. Yeah. Uh, do you have an idea? Margaret, let's we'll start with you. Okay. Because like, to me, it's like, well, okay, like, so when I, I'll just start with me, okay? When I tell people, I will say I'm an atheist, but I, I mean it in the way the word was founded, like, amoral. I'm not moral. I am. I mean, amoral. <laughs> atheist. I'm not a theist. That means I'm an atheist. But do I know? Hell no. But then again, will I? Probably not. If I was going to make a bet, I'm from Vegas, so I would, if I was going to make a bet, I'd say, mm, no. Because that, I would I'd probably win. Um, but that's how I view it. Um, so, so where is that fuzzy line? How do you define skeptic? We still have, nobody's defined mm -hmm. skeptic yet. Well, Okay. You're first. Maybe. I'm first? <laughs> well, well, there's a hand out there. Well, Someone, no, I, I, well, okay. well okay. I, you know, I was going to get to that, though, because there's um, a lot of variations of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been around for a while. Uh, I, <laughs> so, so, so there's only one definition of atheist? I mean, you know, well, all these words, words have multiple Well, yeah, it has. It, it had what do you think is the best definition of skeptic? And then we'll go through. Wow. Well, um, the best definition? Yeah. What's the or, one you like? I would settle for a working definition at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. just trying to think of like one that that's kind of encompasses what I think works. Um, or you can say, I don't know, and we can go to Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, to me, it's somebody who wor views the world in a na naturalistic, critical way, logical, critical way. To me, that's what it is. Because I think that kind of encompasses all of it. It, but it's very generic because of that. Mm -hmm. I'll go to you. Well, someone's had their hand up waving and I, I, Squirming. I can't okay, ignore okay, this person. The only way we're really going to know is if you just stand there and just wait until I say go. Go. Hold on. Wait. That guy doesn't know. Hello? Uh, yes. Hi. Can you introduce yourselves? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I, I didn't even think about it. I, Nobody I, I, I know some of you, but... Uh, All right. So I'm Derek Colanduno. Um, I'm the host of Skepticality. I've been running this track now for, what, well, four or five years. Um, and then this is Margaret Downey. I'll let her introduce herself. I am Margaret Downey, the Frigatriscodecophobia Treatment Nurse at Dragon Con. Um, and I also run the Free Thought Society. I've been an atheist activist for 30 years and involved with the skeptic community for about 10. And this is I'm Eugenie Scott. Scott. I'm the executive director of the National Center for Science Education. I have also been involved in the skeptics movement for lots of years. 20, 20, 20, 20, 30, something like that. I, I have to take off my shoes to count the toes. To <laughs> Barbara Drescher. I'm Barbara Drescher. I've um, been an educator for quite a while, teaching cognitive psychology, cognitive psychologist, and, and research methods. And um, I guess I've been 
semi-involved in skepticism for, I don't want to say how long, um, probably about three decades, but we've really only been actively involved for about three years. Mm. <coughs> DJ. I'm DJ Grothy, president of the James Randi Educational Foundation, and the topic of this panel is something that concerns the foundation a great deal, and often, in fact, something that's debated among supporters of the foundation a lot. The question arises, is the JREF an atheist organization? Um, so I welcome the conversation on this panel to really tease it out in front of the audience. I, I mean, we've been talking for 20 minutes, and... and oh, uh, 15. Uh, then my watch is no, uh, we're not. fast, but, uh, you know, we... Uh, you first to find the terms and then really the, the big nut to crack is uh, does skepticism necessarily lead to atheism? Are all skeptics atheists? If that's the tension we're talking about, I think that's an interesting question. Well, I think that's exactly what this panel's about because I, I feel that's a, been a kind of touchstone now for maybe a year, a little bit more. No, well, um, for 30 yeah. years. Well, it's, yeah, but it's been it kind been, of bubbling it, a lot more than... It resurfaces. Yeah. It yeah. resurfaces in flares. Yeah, yeah, and it's flaring right now, I think. Yes, in a way. it is. Yeah, I've just but noticed And DJ, it. if I could just add to that, uh, does atheism necessarily entail skepticism? Um, um, sir, I think and we all agree on that one, no. And, and that's <laughs> the, that is the perfect turn on that because, yeah. you know, in my 15 years only in this racket, I've met... Uh, skeptics, <laughs> good, bona fide skeptics who yeah. aren't atheists, and we can name a number of them, Martin yeah. Gardner, Pamela Gay, who's yeah. part of the program this weekend, a number of them, Hal Bidlack, oh, who's yeah. been a longtime MC at the Amazing Meeting, JREF's annual conference. But I also know a lot of atheists, and I know a lot of well-meaning, sweet-hearted humanists, all these folks whom I would not consider skeptics. You know, I've been to humanist meetings where everyone agrees uh, on another reason why God doesn't exist or why they're upset about the religious right. <clears throat> Maybe they talk ethics or something, but they're also talking chakras or reincarnation or new age stuff. And to my lights, skepticism is the, like the bigger, better thing. And for a lot of us, skepticism leads to atheism, but I don't think it's a necessary connection. No, I think the biggest example that most people probably know by now is uh, Bill Maher. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan is a yeah. moon landing yeah. hoaxer. Like exactly. he believes it was uh, exactly. and you know, something yeah, cause, I mean, to deny. Yeah, I mean you look at people like Bill Maher, he funded a major motion picture about atheism. He's a die hard, but he's the worst He's a, as far away from being a skepti skeptic as you can get. Well, well especially in the field of, of uh, medicine. medicine. He yeah. believes in some alternative medicine uh, interventions yeah. and stuff. And so, it sounds, so it sounds like we all up here, and maybe some of you uh, can add to this, we all agree skepticism is about critical thinking. It's about love of science, appreciation of science. Uh, it's about, as... Carl Sagan, who was one of the founders of the modern skeptics movement as we know it today, said, exploring claims of the paranormal. If you make an extraordinary claim, it requires extraordinary evidence. And that, to me, that, that's sort of the, the basic born-again skepticism, if you will. That, that's sort of the traditional skepticism that, that I grew up with. Yeah, skeptic <laughs> um, movement And skepticism. it still makes a lot yes. of sense to me. And I, for me, you know, whenever I have to, to pull out the definitions and so forth, especially if I'm writing something for an introduction, I literally go to the organizations that have the name skepticism in them. Yeah. You know, I go to the, S the Skeptic Society, the JREF, um, because it, is, it does identify as a skeptic organization, and, um, you know, a anything with that that claims to be a skeptic organization, and I look at those definitions, I even quote from them, and they are all fairly clear. They are scientific skepticism, the process of, you know, evaluating um, claims and evidence, evaluating information. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'd like to draw a distinction there, too. <coughs> Speaking as president of one of the national organizations, we have a limited mission and we deal, we really peddle in this, uh, or we deal in this testable claims uh, mm -hmm. of an extraordinary nature. So that's what we focus on. But that doesn't mean that we have the position that you shouldn't be skeptical of other things that don't fall within our mission. You know, there are people who are skeptical of God's existence. For whatever reason, they're skeptical. Uh, we tend to argue that uh, a lot of theological argumentation is outside the bounds of science. You can't test it like you can test psychic powers in a lab. Um, but 
you know, people are skeptical of this economic system or Keynesianism versus, you know, if Hayek was right when it comes to planned economies. Um, we're not saying that you shouldn't be skeptical. You, you should basically use critical thinking in every area, but as an educational nonprofit, we focus our mission on the testable claims that you could uh, uh, test in ways you can't test what economic system is the best one, say, or what religious view is the best one. I have a one. question. It, it was more of a uh, starting point comment for what a skeptic is, okay. of just very simply right. someone who applies a system of rigorous doubt and bases conclusions off that evidence. And, and that's at all a journey. Um, you know, some of us take a longer time to get to a certain place. Uh, I think it's extremely important for all of us to exchange our journey stories, uh, whether it's in publications or um, on, on the web. Um, but talking about your journey of questioning everything will help others make that journey too and, and feel like they've, they're not alone and that um, Everyone has a unique story to tell. So I enjoy hearing the journey stories of other people, uh, and I share mine. Uh, and that's part of making sure that people are developing their critical thinking skills so that you're you know, sharing information. Oh, I knew someone who used to go to seances and, and, and talk about those things that you once believed in or never believed in. That, that, I think, is really important for our community, is, is sharing journey stories. Well, here's one that keeps coming up, at least to me, because people actually send me emails and things. And based on things that have been online for a while, I completely <coughs> agree with the whole scientific skepticism thing, because, I mean, that's all we have, right? And then the testable claims issue with gods and religion, I'm good with that. My question is where should we draw that line in a way, because I've seen that line drawn where I think it's overreaching, because the Bible makes claims, and you can mm -hmm. prove them wrong. But that's so, textual criticism, yeah. that's not atheism. That's right. making right. it. But it's it, also it, fact claims. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you yeah. can test those in ways mm -hmm. that exactly. making a faith claim you can't really get at with science. I guess you, my, you can't test whether you can't test whether God miraculously raised Jesus from the dead. Well, because that is a miracle. Right. Well, I could just say and that I don't believe it's, in zombies. Fine. Yes, I but mean, that's, that's that actually yeah, I wanted to address the the testable claims thing and that 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 addresses that, what you just said. I, I can say I don't believe in zombies. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we have, that we s limit to testable claims is because it's really difficult to promote something that you cannot demonstrate, that you can't share. Evidence is something that you can share. Test testable claims when are exactly that, testable. So you can provide evidence for or against, and you can share that evidence. What you personally, the conclusion you personally come to about whether or not um, a, an omnipotent God exists or you know, whether God ra raised Jesus from the dead, um, those personal beliefs are irrelevant. Hmm. Well, it's what you can share. Yeah, let, let's, I want to dig into that just uh, a bit. Um, I'm a, a booster of this testable claims thing, kind of the limited scope of skepticism as a movement. And that's a dis distinction in the definition we need to make because we're all skeptical of all sorts of things, but we're talking about the skeptics movement or this kind of tradition that we're identifying with when we say I'm a skeptic. You're not saying that you're a skeptic, that, you're, uh, that the reasons your husband didn't come home last night when he said he would uh, uh, are, are, are <laughs> true, You're, when we say skeptic, we're talking about the paranormal and pseudoscience. That's the scope uh, we're identifying with. Um, when, uh, when someone says, I don't believe in God, they might have bad reasons or good reasons. They might, ha they might simply lack belief in God because they haven't found any good reasons to believe in God. And I think all of that's fair and fine and okay, it's a different kind of thing than when someone says, um, we've looked into this paranormal claim, we've exactly. studied it, we've examined it. It, it, those claims are wanting, and therefore I don't assent to those propositions. So a wrinkle in all of this is big new atheists these days, Richard Dawkins and others have gone a little further and said, wait, 
theologians, when they say God exists, they're actually making a scientific claim that we can test. And that just gets back to definitions because it depends on the kind of God you're talking about and if that God acts in the world in a way that you can test, in a way that you're going to say isn't a miracle, but in a way that you could actually look at. So you have bona fide skeptics like Joe Nickel testing miracle claims in in churches that, what, they're not haunted by the Holy Spirit. What are those called? The apparitions or whatever, you know, weeping, oh, yeah. uh, weeping. icons or something. Like that, so. um, yeah. the, you can't come the, up with a natural explanation. Then, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like the weeping and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think we should really appreciate the level of um, questioning from every individual and understand that there are some people who want to take that journey regarding religion and some who don't. Yeah. And they're willing to take a journey on other things but not necessarily on faith. Or it's so much a part of their background that you know it's ingrained in, in, in everything they do that it, it doesn't even get questioned any longer. Hmm. And we should appreciate those differences and still be welcoming. Yeah, we should and never kick atheists out of the club, uh, but we just don't want to equate the two categories. I think exactly. everyone on the panel is an, atheist. You know, is an atheist, or we might say is secular or doesn't believe in God or something, but uh, the distinctions we're drawing are just this important distinction uh, regarding testable claims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I honestly, in a way, when it boils down to it, I really don't care because I, I'm only, the only way I can actually ever prove it when I'm dead and then it won't matter. <laughs> um, well, and, you think it won't matter. Well, yeah. and I mean, even though it's not the same of being dead, but I was in a coma for uh, almost two months, and let me tell you, lights were out. There was no time in between, you know, my stroke and waking up at all. You didn't meet Satan? No, I didn't meet anything. I mean, really, it was waking up. I, when I woke up from my coma, I so felt like I was in, I thought, because I was traveling 90% of the time, I thought I was in, in a hotel room and I was late for a meeting. And I tried to get up and I fell off. Um, and then I had tubes on my head and everything. So, you know, so to me, I was like, well, that's, I guess not dead, but what's the difference? Because my brain was off and there was nothing there at all. And I guess that would be scary to some people. To me, I thought it was cool. Because when I first woke up, I thought I heard things in my sleep and I had to figure out how it happened and then it all came to me. When I was waking up, they thought I might not wake up because they took away the chemical that kept me asleep. And it was almost two weeks, I was off of it. I should have woken up, woken up like within like 12 hours and I didn't. And they thought I was not going to wake up. And actually, it was touch and go, I guess. And I didn't know this because I was off. Like, like data, touch, gone. And uh, so when I woke up, I thought for a couple weeks, I heard music, I heard people talking to me, all this stuff. I was like, yeah, I guess it does work. You know, having somebody there with a the radio and talking to the person at home and all that. And I was like, yeah, it must have happened. And then I just kept asking questions about, yeah, when I was at coma, what this, and I read like Swoopy's blog post, because she blogged the entire time I was in a coma. You can actually go, go to my website, colinduna.com, and I have all of her blog posts during my thing. From the moment it happened, she got, when she got home from the hospital, she wrote down everything. It's all detailed, which I love, because I got to go back and read it. And when I realized, you know, okay, I woke, they took off the chemical around now, at this point. And I started to hear all the stories about mm. when all the stuff happened. It's like all the stuff I heard was after they took the chemical off. I was tr I was slowly waking up. When Derek, I was uh, completely dead, gone, I was heard nothing. D Derek, if I may, I, I, I have a question for the panel about this distinction you're teasing out. Um, yeah. To what extent, or even in the audience, uh, do we think that skepticism is a method and atheism is a conclusion? And, and yeah. that's one way that they're different. Any, I mean, it's an interesting idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And a a anyone on the panel? I, I think you you just described my view exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm reading your notes. That's why. <laughs> that's <laughs> not on. Uh, just a joke. Was, well, he he is a mentalism. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, mentalist. So you know. Critical thinking is a method. Yeah, critical thinking is something that you do, uh, uh, and and 
to the extent that critical thinking is, is important or foundational to skepticism as a movement, um, then I think that, that that's, a very, that's a very nice distinction. Mm. I, I don't really have any opinions about atheism, to tell you the truth. I mean, I don't care. Um, right. And, but I do care that more people be critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I think that's something that's really, really important in our culture today. I'm less concerned about religion or atheism. I am concerned about ideology, yeah. mm. of which well, religion yeah, and atheism yes. are examples of ideology. There are many, many ideologies in, in our country, which, and, and we know, we know that ideologies get in the way of decision making based upon empirical evidence and critical thinking. Mm. You can see lots of examples on this in the political sphere. You can see lots of examples of this in many other spheres that I'm sure you're familiar with. But if we want to have a country in which people look at empirical evidence and they think critically about it, they evaluate it and come up with a conclusion, even when that conclusion might disagree with ideologies that they hold very, very strongly, I think we'd be better off. What we have in more cases than not is one's ideology takes precedence. I deal with this in my day job because I deal with the creationists. That's what the National Center for Science Education deals with. Creationists put their religious ideology ahead of empirical evidence. They're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well said. Um, there are many isms that one can point to which take precedence over um, empirical and logical reasoning. Environmentalism, that's one of my isms, <laughs> that can lead somebody to ignoring uh, uh, empirical evidence. Libertarianism is an ism, mm -hmm. that can lead people to overlook empirical evidence. And ideology can get in the way. We live by our ideologies, there's nothing wrong with <coughs> ideologies. I embrace my ideologies that, that uh, tend to shape my life. But I think we all have to realize we have to set aside our ideologies sometimes when the empirical evidence and our ability to logically look at that critical evidence interferes or, or contradicts our ideologies. So I'm all for increasing critical thinking. I don't give a rip about your ideology. Mm. Um, I don't care whether it's theistic, atheistic, libertarian, pick an ism. I want, people, I want people to be critical thinkers, and that, to me, is worth preserving and encouraging in the skeptical yes. movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, Eugenie, do you think that if everyone's a critical thinker, they'll agree? <laughs> 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 Only if we get, a, get to a point where we know everything there is about the ah, material. Great, great. That'd be cool. But, but you know, there's something else to think about, too. Um, I like to to bound the skeptical movement with the natural world, with matter and energy and things that we associate with science. But you know there's more to human life than that. I mean, there is the sphere of, of, of the natural world, of, which is very important to all of us in this room. There's also the sphere of imagination. Mm -hmm. I would hate oh, to not enjoy something like like a, a, a dragon con, and, and clearly we're not dealing with a lot of empirical stuff out there. We're dealing with the world of imagination. Oh. There's also the world, if the sphere, if you will, if you wish to think about it, of uh, I'm not sure quite what to call it. Um, a Jesuit would call it the sphere of of religion or the spiritual world. I would prefer to expand that beyond just theistic kinds of things. The sphere of philosophy, if you will. Um, which is not the same as either the natural sphere or the sphere of imagination. It is something different. It's very much related to uh, logical and empirical interactions of ideas, but it deals with ideas more than it deals with something like evidence and empiricism. And in order to be a, a complete human being, it seems to me that you need to be able to deal with all three of these spheres successfully. And critical thinking applies certainly to two of the three of those, and we can argue about whether it appeal, whether, you know, how important it is to the, to the sphere of imagination, but certainly to the world of, of philosophy, religion, etc., you want people to be critical thinkers, and certainly in the world of nature you want people to be critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. But it's a basic underlying approach to reality that I think is something that should be encouraged. Right. Scott, I have a question on the mic. Uh, yeah. I, uh, 
I guess for your purposes, I would consider myself a toddler skeptic. Toddler skeptic. Um, <laughs> probably about four years or so that I kind of consider myself a skeptic and a, an infant atheist. Uh, so only about a year or so that I've considered myself comfortable you know, calling myself atheist. But when I reflect back on, on making those changes, um, obviously there was a significant amount of logical deduction and, and, and discussion with you know, uh, different people that led me on that path. But I also look at the emotional context that, that helped to put me in that direction. But I, I rarely hear any discussion about that in the skeptical community. And I just want to see if the panel could address that as well. And that's exactly why I wanted to promote us sharing our journey stories. You know, how did we become questioning people? How did we, uh, how were we able to get some information and then think critically about that information? Uh, with me, you know, uh, looking at religion, I came to a conclusion rather quickly using my skepticism and critical thinking skills. Uh, that was part of a journey. I I'm hoping that a lot of you will be sharing that with each other. You know, how did you come to this convention? I think that's an important thing to share. Conventions are supposed to help people meet, exchange ideas, and socialize, but it's also encouraging you to move ahead, um, representing yourself. The dealer's um, room, too. And, and, and <laughs> but to feel encouraged about what you're doing and who you are. And it should last you a whole another year, you know, into um, a situation where you see your friends again, and you're encouraged again, and you're meeting more friends. So coming to this conference is really important. I hope you exchange your business cards with each other, and phone numbers, and emails, and, and really build a community because that's what we're doing. I think you're, are, are you lobbying for you know like a, a quick dating panel. <laughs> Speed dating. Speed dating. Well, we all need each other. <laughs> Not everyone. I don't know if I need skeptics. I mean, I need. I need other. I'm a social primate. Yeah. I need other. I, know, I need other primates. I don't know that I necessarily have to make a bond with fellow skeptics. I mean, you know, to me, it's not a cult. It's not a religion. We'll, we'll start a collection we, for a chimp disagree. for you. Yeah, but people organize around their knitting club or their magic club or juggling or whatever it is. And so, for many of us, skepticism isn't just a way of looking at the world, but it's kind of a hobby. It's our thing. It's our clique Community. or subculture. And so there, I think there is that social emotional need that's met by the skeptic in the pub gatherings when you, where you go and you hug and love on each other and, <laughs> and, out. and also talk about another thing you don't believe in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, you had uh, brought up the idea of skepticism being a uh, process and atheism being a conclusion. Um, and you brought it up to everybody. And I had a couple ideas on that. Uh, one was the, the atheism. I don't think it necessarily has to be a conclusion. I consider myself atheist simply because I'm just not convinced. Right. You know, I, I, I most definitively have not reached a conclusion. Right. And until I see evidence, I won't. I, I reserve judgment. I think that's an important way to see yeah. atheism. Yeah. Uh, many atheists, for, uh, their atheism is for them sort of doctrinaire. It's, it's a position that they hold. Yeah, um, where it's like this does not exist. Yeah. This is not real. And, and, and so the, the old yet. and I think healthy definition of atheism is just without theism without yeah. belief in God and it's not a positive belief it's just lack of a positive belief yeah I actually think it's important to hold that for everything yeah every oh yes yeah, so, and actually that kind of goes into the second one you said about skepticism being a process I just kind of I just thought about this so it's an infant idea and I wanted to see what all of you thought about it was that I had the the idea that skepticism itself is actually not a process skepticism is to use your term an actually an ideology and to give an example of that is that critical thinking is a process. A skeptic, uh, skepticism is the ideology that says critical thinking is the right thing to do. Hmm. Do you see? Yeah. I, I, think, I think for a lot of people who, who play in this game, skepticism and critical thinking are often synonymous. I know yeah. Jeannie didn't, uh, they weren't synonymous in what you were saying. Maybe one informs the other or well, undergirds. Yeah, one, one is the foundation for okay. the other, but skepticism yeah. doesn't own critical thinking. Right. No, no, that's exactly that's what I'm saying, is that, okay, well then, but my, my idea of what skepticism exactly. was as a, as, a, as a core thing is that it's actually sort of, it's, it's a view of the world in that, and you know, I wrote it down while I was doing it. Physical evidence provides objective information about the world, 
It's the belief that physical evidence provides actual information about the real world and that this evidence is the best guide right. to informing how we should view the world. I, I think that's a definition of skepticism. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, something I found useful is to just look at the word skepticism comes from skeptikos, old Greek word that doesn't mean, I think someone gave a definition earlier, it means yeah. rigorous, applying rigorous doubt. In fact, to me, skepticism does not mean applying rigorous doubt to everything. It means inquiring into things and yeah. finding things out. So skepticos means to look into or to find out. It doesn't mean kind of beginning with a conclusion that's bah humbug and ain't no such thing as ghosts or hobgoblins or UFOs. It's kind of open-minded and you look at the evidence and assent only to those propositions for which there are good evidence. Oh, and I, I agree with you, but what I'm saying is that skepticism is the belief that evidence tells you something. Right. Um, like objective I evidence, rather than, just, rather than yeah, I would revealed just say, feelings or something. I actually like wanted to, to just, um, because we have this this growing um, phenomenon going on of the, it's called the CSI effect actually, that I would replace that word physical <laughs> with empirical. Because oh, well, yeah, physical, yeah, it, empirical. It, physical evidence, you know, we, we all get this idea that we have to have physical evidence for crimes and, and so forth to, to prove something. And um, circumstantial evidence is, can be just as strong. Oh, no, you, you're absolutely right. I should have yeah. said empirical. That's what I meant. You, sorry. I think you, meant, I think you yeah. meant empirical, right? Yeah, I did mean empirical. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and we're all saying the same thing. And skeptics are boosters for empiricism. Yes, look at the evidence. Look at the uh, evidence in front of you, the, the empirical evidence. We agree. Thank you. <laughs> Have more questions. Let's just keep that going because there's a lot. Uh, going back to, to what Eugene said about critical thinking, one of the things that comes up over and over is that critical thinking is really, really hard, and humans aren't good at it. We're yes. not. We're not. We're not selected for it. We're not. Yeah. No. Which is why we have superstitions and and uh, prejudices and everything like that. We see something shadow when we run for cover because it's probably a hawk and it's probably going to eat us and it probably works most of the time. So there are people that don't want to apply critical thinking or will but not to every area and that's where we come back to, right. to this uh, religion question that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. what, what is the approach? Is there approach? Should we say you don't have to apply critical thinking to this area, you can compartmentalize it. But over here, absolutely, for vaccines, sure, by all means. What, where is the line? How, how do we handle that? Wow. Well, what, are you, what situation are you talking about, though? What are your goals? Are you talking about when you meet somebody, you know, well, at the for, bus stop? For, for skepticism writ large. Uh, as a movement. As, as a movement, okay. exactly. There are people that will not apply critical thinking to certain aspects of their life or certain aspects of their existence. Do we guide them, help them, say, that's okay, but we'll take you along the ride for, for everything else? Are you asking, like, <clears throat> what point if somebody is, like, not being, to, using critical thinking As, on as an inclusive movement, to get as many people behind oh, the skeptic movement okay. as possible, hmm. are there lines we should what? draw or not? Yeah, it, 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 you should be applying these kinds of techniques and approaches to things having to do with the natural world, the natural world meaning the world of matter and energy. I love Mozart. I don't really like jazz. I don't have to think critically about why I like Mozart and don't like jazz. Wynton Marsalis likes both, right? You know, is there something wrong with me that I don't like both? I don't care. You know, we, should, we should ask him. Pardon me? We'll ask him. <laughs> no, no he's, he's brilliant, but, and I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm musically illiterate, but you know, there are some things that it, maybe applying critical thinking to is not really worth it or important. But if you, you know, if you want to know whether Grand Canyon was cut miraculous, was cut catastrophically by uh, a single event over a period of a week or over millions of years over a long, slow process, that's something that evidence has something to say about. Okay. There was at the at, at, and the, that has, that, that's an example of, of using critical thinking to evaluate claims about the natural world. Sure, but there have been controversies where you've had religious people who are also skeptics who have been called bad skeptics for being religious. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, well, yeah because, yeah. because yeah. religion yeah. is not about the empirical world. Okay? I mean, this sure. is something people need to understand about religion. People do not embrace religion because they want to know how Grand Canyon was formed. Trust me on this. 
This is, this is really not the main reason why people go, you know, have religious beliefs. They're looking for meaning, they're looking for purpose, they are social primates, they're looking for community. There's a lot of reasons why people embrace a religion. If you embrace religion because you want to know why water flows downhill, you're kind of going about it the wrong way. And really, science does a whole lot better job. And, and do we really care what someone personally has concluded about religion as long as they don't impose their religion on us with you know, changing laws and imposing a, a certain standard, uh, mora their morality code, you know, that type of thing? Do we really care that much as long as it's not imposing on us? Doesn't on pick others. our pocket on others? On others, yes. Others. Yeah. No. No. That, no. That's true. <laughs> no. uh, on others. So you know, I don't care. You know, I, I could care less if, if... So your, your question, yes, apply critical thinking certainly to things having to do with the natural world. Right. And where logic and reason are relevant, as in some philosophical issues, certainly, um, by all means. Uh, to, just two quick rejoinders on that. In philosophy, even though it's not empiricism and they're not looking at but those lines logic. of evidence, but, but yeah, there's, there's still reasoning going on. So I wouldn't want to, some of I'm my friends saying. engage in a sort of scientism in that way. I uh, wouldn't want to do that. But um, I also really like the thrust of your question because it bas you were asking an outreach question. If we want to attract more skeptics, mm -hmm. how inclusive are we? When do we say, well, you're not a skeptic, you're not in the club. And, um, Take away you know, we, card. <laughs> I, I, from my perch, from my vantage at, uh, at a national organization, <laughs> I'm interested in out, outreach, yes, but I have, I'm asking different questions than a local organizer would if they're talking about a, a movement, kind of building a movement, because uh, these national organizations, PSYCOP, Shermer's Skeptical Society, JREF, we have limited missions and we're non-profit organizations that have a job to do. That's what we're focus focusing on, promoting skepticism and critical thinking about the paranormal and pseudoscience. Um, but the skeptics movement might say, hey, you know, I want, I want more than my eight people who are skeptical of ghosts to show up, so we might do a program on environmentalism or we might even have a discussion on politics or something a little broader than the limited mission of the JREF because they're a community of inquirers who are interested in all sorts of questions, not just talking about another reason why Bigfoot doesn't exist. So I think that distinction is very important and we shouldn't talk monolithically. We shouldn't say, thus saith skepticism. You have to instead ask, what do the national organizations need to do? What's the local club need to do? What do I want to do as an individual skeptic? Because maybe as an individual skeptic, I'll, I'll think I'm applying critical thinking to economic claims or the claims of that politician, even though those claims don't center on the paranormal or pseudoscience. So I think it's really important to talk about what skepticism or which skepticism, as opposed to imagining that there's one monolithic skepticism that everyone must adhere to. Does anybody find him? Okay. Next up. Uh, yeah, I was kind of confused on a term because the way you guys keep describing skepticism, it sounds like you're talking about just being a scientist. So, what would be the difference of a scientist versus a skeptic? <laughs> uh, most, I think, most skeptics aren't scientists. Well, there's a large there's a large portion of scientists involved in skepticism, but they're they're different. And scientific inquiry is about finding out things that we don't, you know, know. It's not necessarily, it's sometimes about evaluating claims, but um, that's not generally what it is. And, and whereas skepticism is more about evaluating claims and traditional skepticism and organizational skepticism is often okay. about evaluating extraordinary claims that you scientists probably wouldn't even be interested in. That's one of the reasons why it's so important that we maintain um, these organizations because science, scientists really aren't all that interested in ghosts. In general, you know, they're, they're but they're writing up the next proposal for grant money. Eh, they don't have time. That's, that's true, yeah. but those aren't the questions they're they're asking. And so it's it's really a difference of what you're approaching in terms of knowledge. Are you looking for new knowledge, or are you evaluating something that someone else has said is true? And and in science, we're usually looking for new knowledge and and. Um, trying to refine theories of things that we already, you know, have a basic idea about and get the finer and finer details and worked out and so forth. Whereas skepticism is really about evaluating claims that other people make. Also, uh, James Randi, he 
I actually did a very big gotcha to show that scientists are like some of the worst skeptics. Mm -hmm. The Alpha Project, look it up. Mm. It's amazing. As a method, it's called the Alpha Project. Um, as a method of inquiry and as a body of knowledge, science is continuous with skepticism, but they're not identical. Because as we defined it earlier, when you're talking movement skepticism or this 30-year project that was started in the early 70s by a bunch of self-described skeptical men who said, let's publish a magazine, let's speak out against the nonsense beliefs in society, it had a focus on fringe science claims or pseudoscience science or the paranormal, really extraordinary claims. Um, so the distinction Barbara made is important. But that doesn't mean we can't say skepticism, uh, it doesn't mean we should say skepticism is just for some kind of intellectual elite or what uh, Hitchens called the, uh, not just a cognitive minority, but really the cognitive elite, the fit though few smarty pants who are lucky enough to uh, be skeptical of all the nonsense everyone else believes. Skepticism is for everyone. It's uh, and it should be widely and consistently applied. Organizationally, we have that limited scope. So there, there's a relationship between science and skepticism, but they're not continuous. Just last night, there was this great panel on art and skepticism. Yeah. So you don't need to be a scientist to be a skeptic. We think it's probably ideal if you're a science booster yeah. and a skeptic. So you're an advocate for science or science leaders. There's, there's also a difference between skepticism and skeptical activism. Well, I'm a science groupie. <laughs> well, here's a, yeah, what would be the difference between... Skeptics? Well, it, an activist is somebody who's literally trying, it, it's trying to deliver a message to the public and not necessarily just doing skeptical inquiry. I mean, well, there may be ghost in, investigators, you know, that are skeptical investigators. They don't necessarily speak at conferences, but they spend their time, you know, investigating claims of ghosts or well, something like that. Here's an example, including me. Everybody up here, raise your hand if you're a scientist. Say? Well, I mean, less yeah, than half. I, I can understand, like, you wouldn't say you're a professional scientist, but I'm thinking, like, if you apply the scientific method and you test things out and in a general you're providing sense, yeah. claims, that makes you a scientist. Well, well, that's, oh, yeah. that, I, I think that's a loosey goosey definition of science. Um, th th maybe in the spirit of science, maybe you're no, applying the spirit of science to your everyday life, but that's just kind of reason and experience. You know, yeah. you're, you're, it, looking at the empirical claims that come your way, you're testing it uh, based on the objective reality, you're looking to it. That's not science per se, it's kind of the spirit of science or the mood or it's the- science It's scientific skepticism. Science. Yeah. But I, Casual you, scientific. Here's a recommendation. You should probably, because they're everywhere, in almost every city, has a uh, skeptic camp or one near you. Look it up, yeah. go to one, they're great. And yeah. almost everyone I've been to, I haven't been to one at, in Atlanta, we do it uh, maybe once or twice. We've had actual scientists there. It's always been other people like us to do presentations about the thing they're interested in. And it's that type of thing. You don't have to be a scientist. You just have to be sciencey. I once you heard know a what you're talking about. You have to do your homework. I once heard a, a, a scientist say, damn, you skeptics love science more than scientists. <laughs> you know, because we're science boosters. True. We're kind of into it. But not all of us has to have, have to do science, right. per se. Th think of it as kind of a continuum. Mm -hmm. um, your kid falls down, scrapes his knee, you bandage it up. That doesn't make you a doctor. Um, <laughs> you, if, if, you're, if you're an EMT, yeah. an emergency medical technician, you can do a lot of good and save people's lives, but that doesn't make you a doctor. It makes you do kind of like a doctor. You're trained sort of like it. You think like a doctor. You've had some instruction. To really be a doctor, to really be a scientist, requires you know, recognition by the culture that you've had a certain level of training. That doesn't mean that, that you know, when your kid scrapes his knee, you're going to go and rub more dirt in it. Okay? I mean, you, you know, even if you're not a trained doctor, you can still do the things that a doctor would do and think like a doctor in terms of trying to uh, get rid of the bacteria on your kid's scraped knee and so forth. But there is, you know, there is this continuum between being a scientist and thinking like a scientist. Does that help? Uh, well, what I you just don't know, took out of that is like there are no professional skeptics, as far as I'm 
Like, no well, one would say, I am a skeptic. Yeah. Like, the, 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 well, people the good are trying to make their living that way, but I, it's a rough road to yeah. well, I mean, It seems the, like it would be a weird job that, title. In the last 30 years, there's really been a, uh, a desire. I don't know how okay. successful it's been. Uh, speaking autobiographically, not so much. Um, there's been a movement to prof there's been a kind of a desire to professionalize the movement of skeptics. So you have folks like Joe Nickel yes. and Ben Radford who have bona fide research methods and investigative methods training who are able to share that with uh, other people who want to learn that sort of kind of real expertise. So if the skeptic in quotes movement goes somewhere that I'm real happy with, it will be only because it increasingly becomes more professional or certified, not certifiable, um, uh, by which I mean, wouldn't it be great if there was some way that if you really wanted to learn the goods of skepticism and know how to go out and investigate paranormal scenes like a crime scene, but instead you're looking at ghost claims or something, that you learn the investigative methods as opposed to just this well-meaning, enthusiastic dilettantism that says, I don't believe in ghosts, therefore I'm uh, qualified to go out and debunk them. And I think that's, that's a risk. That's another, that's another path. Or I listen to a podcast on, you know. Um, it sounds like you want, like, the Better Business Bureau for, for skeptics. No, no I, I just like the idea of some training, <laughs> oh, yeah. like in any field. Okay. Yeah. Kept, kept uh, are a lot of our them. skeptic books are available on, uh, like, e-books and... and there's a few. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope all of us have a, a good library and, and resource uh, material to look at. Um, There's a bunch of it out there. With skepticism, and you could go and buy some more. Margaret, you asked that question right on cue, because the Randy Foundation, I'm happy to say, <laughs> has all of Randy's books now available for iPad, Kindle, and Nook. Oh, Excellent. I didn't know that was all there. And so if you go to our table, there's these little QR codes. You just take a picture of it, download it on your smartphone or your iPad or something, and have access to it right now. Great. Yeah. Thank you. That, that help? Uh, I'll look into it. Look at, look at Skepticat. I think you'd like it. It's Prometheus. All right. Um, first of all, thank you very much. It's a real privilege and a pleasure to be able to engage with people whose work and opinions I've been familiar with for years. Uh, this, is, this is really wonderful. Wow. Um, the second piece is really more of a, a bit of fodder to toss out back on the original topic here. Um, I think that on the, the original question of skepticism implying atheism, um, not so much that, but religion, at least most religions, being founded on the idea that personal revelation and authority are valid means of knowledge, as such, they are constantly and perhaps inevitably going to be encroaching into the area of empirical claims. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, they are constantly going to be um, into areas that are, are going to engage with the skeptical community. So. Uh, my opinion then, not so much you've got to be an atheist, but as a skeptic, you are going to run up against religion yeah. as a non-skeptical area on a regular basis. I, I think that's all, all the more important that we understand where the, what the focus is, that it's really about investigating those claims and not necessarily about um, dictating conclusions about the overall religion itself or the existence of God and the things we can't test. You know, when, when my example about ghosts is clear, we don't tell somebody that, you know, there are no ghosts in your house. We say, why do you think there are ghosts in your house? And when they present evidence, you talk about or investigate the, all, the natural explanations for those things. And or that's ask the them questions. Exactly. And, or, and when, they, when they have <laughs> evidence, we address the evidence and we can produce our own evidence. But it's not about whether or not there are ghosts, but what is the evidence for a ghost? And, and personally, if there is an evidence, I don't believe it. You know, there's a really good set of stories surrounding that. Look up uh, the stuff around when Darwin created the, his book, especially like all the stuff that surrounded it, like the, where the agnostic 
I think that came from because his bulldog came at that word because they were trying to wrestle with that problem. And there's a lot of great stories in that. Thank you. Can you help? Yeah. <laughs> um, what can those of us who are skeptics in the audience do to differentiate ourselves uh, from, say, global warming skeptics who are not really skeptics but still uh, the <laughs> people co sure. And then sure. for those of us in the audience who are atheists, what can we do to differentiate ourselves from mesotheists who just hate religion, mm. who are sort yeah. of the anti-theists? Yeah. And then for those of us in the audience who are both skeptics and atheists, how can we, you know, differentiate uh, the atheist label and the skeptics label um, just day to day with our family and friends who may not have that uh, good an education um, in these related <coughs> issues. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a great well, exemplifying one, yeah. who you are in your actions. You know, when you say you're a skeptic, um, you can um, ask a lot of questions and prove that you are skeptical. And um, I live my atheism. You know, I, I'm no hypocrite, and, and I will never be trapped in someone saying, well, um, language is very important, I think, that when you live your life as a conclusion, you've come to the conclusion that you're a skeptic, you've come to the conclusion that you're an atheism, then try to live your life fully, even in your language use. You know, I'm very careful. I, I don't use religious terminology. Even you know, I never say "God bless you." I never uh, find is myself. It, what is it that, that George Crab says? But then, what about the word "believe"? As in, like, I believe in evolution. Yeah. It, it, no, you don't do believe you, in no. evolution. No, no. <laughs> well, exactly my point. Um, you are you careful you. about that as well? The word "believe" and "belief" has been purged in my language, and, and I did it We're on purpose no, no, no. because no, I, th I just think it's a very you know iffy word. Um, so I would encourage everyone to rethink their language yeah, because that point. exemplifies who you are, is your use of the, of the but language. But you know, you bring up a really good point about how do you distinguish between people who just don't believe in God but who don't care a whole lot about it, mm -hmm. people who um, are actively anti-religious and right. feel very strongly about it and want to do something about it and out campaigning. Um, and, you know, the word atheist is applied to themselves by people in both camps. Um, it, you know, for that first group, the people who just don't believe in God but really don't care, um, which is where I would put myself, um, I don't call myself an atheist because the word atheist, at least in American English, my impression is, has the connotation of being anti-religious. I'm not anti-religious. And so, you know, how to refer to myself, I refer to myself as sometimes as a non-believer, as a non-theist, as somebody who doesn't believe in God, uh, but I don't use the word atheist. I think that train's left at the station. I think the word atheist has the connotation of anti-believer. Mm -hmm. And if one is not an anti-believer, then you need to come up with But I use word. it purposely for that reason. Yeah, I'm exactly. trying to change exactly. that perception. Because you have a different <laughs> activist agenda. And yeah. I think that's an important yeah. distinction too. We're all we're not all fighting the same fight. And yeah. and uh, exactly. that's a, that's the big deal. I, I really resonated with your question about drawing a distinction between global warming denial, uh, global warming skeptics and and skeptics like good. us. You that's know, the word nice. skeptic has a cachet in our society such that deniers want to call themselves yeah. skeptics. Yeah, I, I, and so the important thing to do mm, is to call deniers. a spade a space. Yes. They are not skeptics. They're not open-minded to evidence. They're not willing to change their mind. They have a conclusion and they, they are what we call denialists. They deny the possibility that the evidence could be right. The first time I heard the crank people use skeptic, I was like, yes! Oh, really? <laughs> it was it was both at the same time. It's like you want to be us. That's so cool. But no. <laughs> at the same time, it's both at the same time. I mean, on the definition thing, uh, I try all. The, I mean, to the point where I annoy people, where they try to do a whole thing. Well, just a theory, even if they're trying to do it as a joke. I say, just change that. Make a hypothesis. Hypothesis, because that's what you mean. Because. It's, because that's the word we got in trouble. Even that's not yeah. what they mean. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we're done <laughs> telling me. And uh, Before I, we leave, Derek, can I make one more push for uh -oh, the 
2012 parade. I uh, would love to see a skep track entry in 2012. The parade was this morning. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. And we need to be there. We need to be interviewed. We need the media to see us. We need the public to yeah. see us. And I'm trying to raise $500 by the end of this session uh, on Monday. And so far, I have $120. Wow. So that's Very great. Cool. Thank you. My donation box will be up here all throughout the um, conference. It's, it's actually a fairly big deal. It, that DragonCon parade gets a lot of media coverage. I've seen people record that thing and put it on like YouTube, everywhere. They put it on the news a bunch of places. CNN is covered. Last year, the, the college, um, I don't know what they call it, the college football group, <laughs> they actually requested that we change the path so that on opening day, they could film the parade going behind <laughs> the, the ESPN truck filming live. So it's a pretty big thing. And actually, right before I sent you that email, this year they even sent out a thing to all the directors and said, if you have guests who like to be in costume, go here at a certain time because CNN is going to be there. So it's like a cool idea just because even if you're like parade, it's a good marketing thing.